Good day, friends. Lance Klessig here. Oh, we're closing in on, what is it, the 12th or 13th of uh, April. Beautiful few days. Just out rolling out some silage bales. Actually got my good buddy there, Brad Vanderzees. I want you just to take a look here at this, right? This is Punk City. But these are side hill wet seeps here. And so what we're doing, we just rolled out a dry bale. Brad's rolling out a, a Oatledge bale. We got another one set right here. There's some of my feed. There's some feed up there. But what are we doing? We're putting armor and carbon down on the ground. Uh, they're not only, they're probably only gonna eat about two thirds of this stuff. Uh, and so I guess what I wanna, what I impress upon us is that these areas typically drowned out. And it's hard to keep a perennial seeding in there. So traditionally the last 20 years, farmer comes in here and grows corn or beans, corn and beans, and he works these areas and tries to fluff them out. Well, that ain't no good. Uh, that's one way to air the soil out, but then she's just tighter than tight, right, once it dries down. And so we've had, I think, three days of around 70 to 80. And um, so what we're gonna do, we got rain coming an inch uh, Saturday, Sunday, going back to normal. So we're gonna roll out this carbon. Roll it right out. Protect and armor the soil, right? And use feed to do it. Oh gosh. It's almost like a ribeye steak. Not quite. But um, I guess where I'm going with that is that I want armor. I want organic matter. And I don't want to buy it in a jug. Look at here's a bale we rolled out. Hard to see. We rolled out a bale right here. Oh, about three weeks ago, did a video there. And, and we're getting some greenery, but they're nipping, right? Here's Tolly. Hey, sweetie. You out of your garden or what? Yeah. So here's some of the feed. And like I said, we're going to do in three bales today because it's supposed to get wet. This is first crop. But again, using the tools at, at my disposal. I don't own a skid loader. My son just sold his Alice 190, doubled his money. Uh, and so we're gonna, we're letting these little critters. Here's Buddy, she's she's gonna stay home. That's Buddy. Her and Chatty, that's it. That's all. They're, the rest are going to a different home soon. Hey Rem, hey buddy. Uh, so yeah, that's what we're doing and rolling out some feed. Here's another bale. Look at all the manure distribution, right? Here's another one. We roll out oats here, if you can see it. Uh, so again, that's, that's what we're after. Brad's here doing some dirt work. I guess I should say soil work, but because that's the business I'm in, but it's, uh, yeah, so they're they're doing what they need to do. Rolling feed. Here's, here's some of the calves from last year. Uh, there's Mr. Brad. Brad's out of Ridgeway. Hell of a good guy. We had a fire across the road last night. And I'm going to tell you something. I was so damn impressed with our community. Damn impressed. I ain't going to lie. Neighbor Steve was out there shredding uh, corn stalks for baling, for bedding. And oh, here's some here's some residue and armor. Uh, and he had a bearing go out on his uh, stock chopper, and caught fire. And we had a heck of a lot of wind. We had 86 degrees and like 40 mile an hour gusts. And I I come down or come up from downstairs because we had a pup a dog having pups, and I thought this ain't good. I can smell smoke come out to the end of the driveway. I called Brad and, and Willie and I said, we got issues. They said, call it, call it in. They're both on the fire department and they were coming. Uh, but what am I getting at is that uh, if it wouldn't have been
have been for the neighborhood. Brad had his skid loader over there at Andy Frickson's. Andy had his skid loader. Eric had a skid loader. Bobby Sr. had a skid loader, Erdman. And then uh, Mitch or uh, Mike Zobel had one. Them suckers were in that cornfield just buzzing, trying to get that fire under control because it got it got 75 feet away from that building site. And volunteer fire department, they got here, but you know, they can only go so fast. They got to get to the station, get the trucks. And uh, I'm pretty convinced those skid loaders, these skid loaders saved that farmstead. And it's pretty ironic when you come from a rural community, you've been away from a while and then you see it again, right? Because not only did the fire, volunteer fire department come from three different stations, Dres, or, uh, Dakota, Nodine, and Pickwick. There was 10 trucks there. Cody, I forget what's his last name. He was kind of leading the charge. And they got that sucker out. I was able to ride around in the truck with Willie and Shelby and Cody and the brush truck. And I thought, this is living, friends. This is how you're a part of the community, whether you're an EMT, your fire department, and so I thought to myself, you know, I live in the community and I don't work out of the, off the farm. And let's take care of some business. So I called Cody and I said, Cody, what's it gotta be to be on the local fire department? And I met with him just half an hour ago before Brad come with a skid loader. And so those conversations are happening. And I guess what I want to impress upon you, friends, is that get engaged, get involved, say no to a lot of things. I'm saying no to those goats. No, they're leaving. They're all pregnant. They're leaving. They're breads. They're worth a premium, right? And yet, I can only manage so many things. And so, like on my last video, I wanted to be part of my wife's adventures over here in that round pen with the horses and doing equine therapy. I want to be part of bringing people up here to our, our new shed and teaching them about the farm and the land. And I get kind of damn emotional about that because here's the truth, friends, that my name means of the land. And I've been blessed to steward it, this land. And it's beat up. It's beat up, look at it. There's some exposed soil here. And I didn't graze it too tight here, but this is my sacrifice area. And so I guess thought my, my thought for the, the day here, we're gonna close out so I don't get too much grief from Clifford and others about long videos, but think about what your strengths are. What's God given you? He's given me a passion for people in the land. I don't know how to operate those things very well. See it? Bradley does. I like these kind of critters. And I like people. And so, um, yeah, thought for the day is how can I best utilize the tools that God has given me? Maybe not. you're not a livestock guy. Maybe you're row, growing row crops, right? But can you work with a neighbor to bring critters in on corn stalks and graze? Can you work with a neighbor like Brad? He's here at the beckoning call. He quit his day job last fall or two falls ago, I think. He do what he loves. He loves running this excavator and really he loves helping people. So with that, we're gonna sign off. But again, think about how can you improve your land? How can you network with people? right? All right, friends, we're going to sign off. Have a good day. Give us a, a thumbs up and, and think spring.